Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I want to show you or teach you how to use the hook use state. If you're not already familiar with functional React components, I recommend that you go read up on that because that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial. But for the most part, when you are building out a component in React, you often need to keep track of state, right? So on the right panel over here, we have a, a Chrome browser pointing to a simple bootstrap form. And an example of using state is when the user types into the email address and clicks submit, the state of the form, like that is if the email address is not defined, if the password is not defined, you want to check that and display some error text. Okay, so what you're seeing on the right is just a static hard-coded HTML uh, form. And you can see the code representation over here on the left. And all of this is being hosted on a Create React app um, project structure. So if you don't know how to do that, you can look that up. But basically what I want to do is teach you how to use the use state hook to basically hook in these input boxes, do some validation and show, and hopefully that'll give you a good understanding of how that hook works. So inside your functional component, there is the ability to import a hook called use state. So if I do that up here and use a name import from the React project, I can then start using that on my page itself. Now the use state hook is just a function that you have to call inside of your uh, functional component, right? So app is my functional component and use state is a function that I call and it takes an argument which happens to be the default state or the initial state. So in our case, since we're doing input boxes, it would make sense to make a state for the email address and set that equal, equal to an empty string. And when you call this function, it returns you an array of two elements. Okay, so traditionally what we do with ES6, you can do array destructuring. You can say const and then the array equal to something. And then we could put a variable here, say, I don't know, email. And then the second argument in that array or the second element in that array is a function that you can actually call to change the state of whatever you're trying to store. So in this case, if we call use state, pass it an empty string, we get back an email for the first index and a function for the second index. And we can call that function anywhere in our app, for instance, when we type into our email to change the state of the email. So just to quickly show that, if I go to my email input here and I set the value equal to that email state, and I go ahead and just type in like some default state like hello. Notice that when I save the React component, the input box starts with the default state of hello. Okay, so that's that's cool, but now you can't actually change the state, right? We want to be able to type into this input box, and we can't do that right now. If you hear me clicking on my keyboard, it doesn't work. And that is because this state is never changing. Set email is never called. So if I go back to my input box and I add an on change listener. And I just go ahead and pass that um, an anonymous function and call set email. And I could pass it e dot current target dot value. And that'll pass the value of whatever the user is typing in. So now you can see state is actually changing. So what we actually want to do is let's hook up the password as well. And we can follow the exact same approach. So if I have a state variable called password, we can have a set password function. And I'll just set it to my password for right now. And we're going to go ahead and hook that into the value in on change of our input boxes for the uh, password. So value is equal to password. On change is going to be pretty identical to this. Um, but instead of calling set email, we're going to be calling set password. So now when I type into either the email or the password, the state of this component is changing. And we can actually start doing some validation here. So Right now, the validation is kind of hard coded. So let me just go ahead and get rid of that validation that's hard coded. And what we want to do is when the user submits, we're going to show that validation. So on the form itself, we could add an on submit callback and have that call a submit function. So I'll just go ahead and make a submit function that takes a first argument of the event. And we definitely want to call e.prevent default so the form doesn't actually submit and try to refresh the page. But what we want to do is when the user tries to submit the form or click the submit button, we want to run some validation and show it if the email has not been set yet, right? So if I click submit now, nothing happens, but it should probably show that red error text below the email input and the password input. So in order to achieve that, 
we need probably another state variable. So in this case, I'm going to make one called um, errors. And I'll just go ahead and call the setter function set errors. And I'm going to say use state is equal to an empty object. And again, the initial state can be whatever you want. In our case, we're going to be setting it to an object because we're going to keep track of the keys that are failing. So now in our submit function, we could just check if email is not set or if um, password is not set, so not password. We're going to basically set errors of email equal to email must be provided. And same with password. If password is not set, we can say password must be provided. Now the main takeaway is we need to make sure we call that setters function that was provided to us when we called use state or else your state will never change. So let's just go ahead and pass in errors again. And now, again, nothing will happen because we can type in and we can click submit, but nothing actually happens because we're not actually checking that errors map. Okay. So now if I go back to that small component where we had that text displayed, if I just type in some um, text here, it should show up. Whoops. Um, but what we want to do is if errors dot email is set, we want to go ahead and display something. And then we do the same thing down here. So if errors.password is set, we are going to want to display those. So now if I refresh the page and click that submit button, we get uh, an error because I typed something wrong. This actually should be errors.email, or sorry, errors.password. Let me save that and see if that fixes our issue. Let me try this. I might actually need to pass it a brand new object for it to actually do something. Let's see if I click that. There we go. So a couple little mistakes along the way, but hopefully that doesn't deter you from understanding what's going on. But basically, you can't pass the same object to the setter function. You have to actually pass a new reference to a new object or else your set state function is not going to do anything. So in this case, I made a new object called error map. I could have also done like this, make an object and do dot 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 errors if I wanted to. But in this case, we're just going to do a new object here. And we set the values of those error texts. And now if I type in an actual email address or password and click submit, those things go away. So hopefully this was a pretty good overview of how to use the use state um, hook. Ran to a little bit of errors along the way, but hopefully my debugging session helped you understand it more and help me kind of learn more about this because that is something that totally slipped my mind as I was working on this. All right, well, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be posting more little snippet videos like this of React along the way, and I hope it helps you in your web dev journey. Have a good day.